Well, I'm Jordan Moore. That's my Trojans Live co-host, John Jackson. And uh, today we're going to have a little uh, outside of the radio discussion. It's uh, Black History Month, and we're celebrating USC's black history. And uh, JJ, one of our proud athletes, sort of on, on several different levels, an academic All-American here, a great wide receiver here, a two-sport athlete in baseball, and, and now a, a successful broadcaster here calling USC games and, and talking on the radio with me. So take me back uh, take me back to, to your childhood a little bit. Just give, give me an idea of the landscape when, when you're growing up in Los Angeles and, and, and you're learning to play sports. You, you know, your dad was, was in sports, and you know, what were your options? What, what, were, what, were, what were you thinking about as a kid? Well, it's funny because, um, you know, my dad never was one to sort of, you know, emphasize race or how much it mattered and stuff. My grandfather was, but he had totally different experiences. He always would tell me the story about how he went to college, got an A in swimming, but was never allowed to get in the pool. <laughs> and so how, you know, because of the, the, you know, he had swim as the work was with the requirements to graduate. And, but black men or women weren't allowed in the pool. And so due to that fact, he had, you know, he took the class and that, that was the rule that he couldn't go into the pool. Our family is very, you know, prides himself on education. And my grandfather went through and he would tell me story after story of what he went through in order to get that education. But I always remembered that, you know, growing up that um, there's going to be hurdles that you are going to have to face and you have a choice. You can make an excuse of why you're not getting it done, and you can hear those all day long, you know, no, no matter what your know, race. Uh, but my grandfather gave me, I think, that internal determination that no matter what the case would be, you're going to graduate. He graduated with his degree and his master's degree in a time that you're not supposed to get it being a black man. So um, that's sort of, I've always taken that with me, I think. And that's why when I've had the opportunities that I've had, I made sure I took advantage of them. Who were your athletic role models when you were a kid? Well, I used to love Lynn Swan. He was by far who I wanted to be. I mean, he was everything that encompassed what I wanted to be. I loved the Steelers. Our Pop Warner team was the Steelers uniform. I loved USC. Of course, Lynn Swan went to USC. And of course, at those times, he was winning Super Bowls and everything else, considered one of the best receivers in the NFL at that time. And so I always wanted to be Lynn Swan. So I, if there was one guy I patterned myself after, I wore 88 in high school when I was when I was young, as you know, being a, a freshman in high school. Um, if there was one guy I wanted to be, it was Lynn Swan. That was the guy I do. We've had many football All-Americans at this university. We have not had many football academic All-Americans. That's a, that's a shorter list. Is, is there even more pride in being on that list than, than, than maybe being on a, on a, you're on certainly many lists in terms of catches and touchdowns and things like that, although sliding down by the year. <laughs> right. But uh, how, how much pride do you take in being on that list? You know, that is the most gratifying thing in my entire life, to be quite honest with you. Um, because I know how much work it took. I know how much focus it took. But it was something that I wanted more than anything else because I wanted to be somebody different at USC. From a football perspective, there were going to be great players before me, better players before me. There are going to be better players after me. I knew that. I knew that going in. I wanted to be the best football player I could be, but I knew that going into it. But the one thing that I'm most proud of today is there's very few people that can say that they were an academic All-American in both sports, that they, you know, they played at a high level. They were record breakers in both sports. Another area where maybe the tide's changing are black quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, uh, again, Russell Wilson in his, his second consecutive Super Bowl. And it, that, that tide really seems to have changed, but you saw, sort of saw it way back in its infancy with, with Rodney Pete as your quarterback here. What, what do you remember his experience being and, and you know, the, the sort of portrayal of him as, as one of the few black quarterbacks in that time? I think that's one of the things that, as a society, we should look towards and how the evolution of you know, the quarterback has come and how they are changing the position, right, and how the position is played. I mean, right now, when you're talking about the Super Bowl, um, you know, you're, how do you defend Russell Wilson from running? I mean, that's a, that's a concern, right? But once again, it's taken guys like him to understand and appreciate the position. As you mentioned with Rodney Pete, he's a classic example. He learned how to play the quarterback position um, the way the position was played at the time. He adapted to it. But he also was a running quarterback. And we, even though in those days we weren't an option team, we had option concepts within our offense, even back in those days, even being at USC, which I don't even think we've seen it <laughs> ever since Rodney you know, left USC. Right. So, you know, but we did, we did run the option. And we had plays that literally ran the option to give Rodney opportunities to run the football. But even in Rodney's case, my appreciation for him is that he learned to play the position the way the position was played at the time and then put his own 
signature mark on it, which made him a great quarterback, obviously, which got him into the NFL, and now was sort of one of those pioneers to get guys to the next level to, to what we're seeing today, which is quarterbacks have to have mobility. I mean, yep. it's, it just it's, the trend is going that way, and I think it will continue to go that way. Leslie, uh, as, as I said, you, you still cover sports, uh, high school and, and college. You, you look at the professional landscape. When you, when you look at African-American athletes, what do you think are the biggest challenges that they still face today? Well, I, I think that there's still racism. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not a person that ignores that fact. And, and for that reason, um, and it's not, I don't think it's as intentional as it was in the past. I think back in the day, even, you know, even some of my days early when I was growing up, people were intentionally racist. <laughs> they tried to be racist. They hated you just off the color of your skin, and that was, that was it. I don't think that that's necessarily as prevalent this year, in these days, obviously, with you know, African Americans getting more opportunities, but I do think it's inherent. And from that standpoint, if you're African American, you still have to go in with the understanding that you're gonna have to do more than the next guy. And if you don't have that understanding, then you are you know, defeating your purposes. Now, a lot of times it works in your favor, but for the most part, I still think that racism is still out there. Um, it's certainly, it shouldn't be ignored. I don't think it's as outwardly, it's not the politically correct thing to say. I mean, it'll get you fired in a, in a, in a day at any job these days. Um, but I do think that you know, for African Americans, you have to take the approach, which many did before you, <laughs> that you're gonna have to make sure that you are better than the next guy. And that is what I preach to my kids all the time. Um, it's not that they don't like you, it's not anything personal, it's just that you have to go into the understanding of that. And if you do, you will have success. And you know, don't ignore it, um, but although, although it's getting better, don't ignore it, and that's the approach you have to take, you know, even for young kids growing up. All right, that's John Jackson. We always appreciate your perspective, JJ. That's why we wanted to uh, bring you in as part of this discussion. Uh, all month long, we're covering USC Black History at uh, uscbhm.com. Uh, look for it. Thanks so much, JJ. Thanks. Bye on, everyone. Right. Bye on.